today, I'm gonna wear a do-rag. It's actually a sleeve off a t-shirt because today I'm working outside in Florida in the heat. Got the fan blowing in the background. The Blue Jays going up overhead. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some installs. I am gonna put some new coil springs on the 97 front and rear, new sway bar connection rods, some spider tracks wheel spacers because the wheels are rubbing and that's the only brand that I recommend. Plus new shocks from Detroit Axle all the way around and they're going on this Jeep. Right now it's jacked up and sitting on some big old Harbor Freight jacks. So let's get to it. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our springs are the right size and our shocks are the right size before I take the old ones off. Gotta make sure everything fits. Okay, I feel like I've got a, some kind of magic trick going on here. <laughs> 10 minutes later, ta -da! puzzle solved. Okay. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get the, the sway bars uh, connectors off. We're going to have to get the shocks off and then we're gonna have to drop the axle so that we can get the spring out. All right, shock is out. I am going to need a little persuader. Please take it on top of the door. <laughs> there I usually put them together so that I know what comes with what. Put it right there. Ready. Will it lower? One down. Hmm. Yep. Okay, with the shock disconnected, sway bar disconnected, I now can work the spring out and put the new spring in. Sometimes for a lift, people put like pucks on here that are an inch, adds a little bit of elevation. That's the least expensive way. Now this bump stop, maybe this bump stop used to have a rubber piece on there. And that's probably uh, when your axle hits, it's supposed to, to take, it, take it easy. <laughs> but, that bump stop looks like it's pretty much gone. So here we are. That spring is in. Gonna take a little pry bar, lift it up, and that'll allow us to get it off the back. So that's out. This is the third set of springs I have put on on a Jeep recently. Well, our 07, I did a lift, new springs, new shocks. The 10, new springs, three and a half inch lift, new shocks. So, done it a few times. Oh, there we go. And that, that is in. So springs are in. Now we gotta get the shocks off the rest of the way, and we have to get the uh, sway bar connects off the frame mount up here. But I'm gonna do the shocks first. 
So to get the shocks off, you're gonna have to get up into there and get those two bolts off. Uh, it's a 13 millimeter, so I have an extension and I'm gonna put the extension up there and get this old shock off. So, the old shock is off. Now, I don't know what brand these old shocks are, but if I had to take a guess, I'd almost think Monroe. Uh, but it says, Matic. So your front shock is a little, a little bit longer, and this has got a single bolt that goes up through a plate, and the bottom has two hooks. Looks a little different than the back shock. The back shock is shorter and it has this mount. So if you go to put it on and wonder what's going on, let's go ahead and thread this up in there. Could be a super mechanic if I had three arms. Each one's put in hand tight for right now. I'm gonna put a little bit of hand power on there so I can actually feel what my foot pounds feels like. And then the bottom has got to come attached to this. So we're gonna go with 18 on that up there. When you have the spring out, it might be a good time to do this. Just a note. <laughs> so that's the back of the bolt. Uh, it's like a wing nut that I don't know what they really call this. If you know what this is called, <laughs> comment below. Look how wore out that is. Those are the two straight ones and those ones are curved? Yep. Okay, so these are two straight ones. So let's open her up. our sway bar connectors and we're going to put this right in there just like that and this is going to go on the back side of the mount so sway bar on this side Go ahead and hook that up. Cut. And have this ready, and as it comes down, I'm gonna have to lift up the axle a little bit. This is an alignment tool. It helps line up holes. It's great if you're trying to put on a three point. Uh, I like the fact that this one also comes with a three eighths and a half inch uh, ratchet as well. Once you got it all lined up, and it makes a hammer too. because it's almost designed to be a hammer. <clears throat> All right, so our shock is on, our spring is in, our sway bar is connected. We are just gonna tighten that down right over there. 
if you're going to do a lot of wheeling, which we don't do in this particular Jeep, you'd probably want to get some quick disconnects for your sway bars. They are quick to disconnect, but sometimes <laughs> not quick to reconnect. New springs, if you're going to get a lift, get the entire set. A lift would come with springs that are a little bit bigger, shocks that are a little bit bigger. These connects may be a little bit bigger. This side is done, but the lunch lady came, my wonderful wife. So now if I can get myself up, it's pizza time. But before we do lunch, I gotta go wash my hands. Side one is done. Let's finish up side two so we can put the tires back on. And that's the rear end, pretty much the same as the other side. Driver side, passenger side, same thing. Shock, sway bar, connector, and spring. Last thing I do is to clean off the hubs, put the spacers on, put the tires back on, and to see the how to put a spacer on, see the video link below. Welcome to the front. And as usual, on an afternoon in Florida, we are under the threat of possible rain so we'll see if we get this done i did have to change shirts because in florida you sweat the front okay the sway bar connects are different on the front with a little ball joint curve the shocks have a single mount up top there's a hole for you to put a socket in and be able to get that shock out and then the shock mounts down here in the bottom with the two bolts similar to what we had up at the top. Once we've taken the shock out, taken the sway bar out, then we can relax the axle to let it droop down to change out the spring. So let's get to it. Again, make sure that the, the bend is outward. Put that on. We're going to uh, and I'm not going to tighten that top piece down until I get the bottom piece attached because I want it to be able to pull up and snug itself in and not have to fight this. But first we got to get the shock off so we can lower everything so we're going to take the shock off now and conveniently there's a hole right up here with the new shock there's a new set of bushings grommets and washers so you kind of want to look at what's going on here up on the top you have a bushing and a, a washer this is like a flying saucer on top. So you want to replicate that. You don't want to make it go the other way, otherwise it won't squish it right. So the reverse, just like that, bigger part, smaller part, and the new metal. And that's gonna go up in here like this. But before we can put that on there with this, we have to get the shock in there.
now that that re spring retainer is out, we should be able to just pull the spring out. So if you could give me another spring. That one is gone. So make sure that when you're taking the spring out, it's a whole lot easier to take it out with this retainer that's gone. Those are just kind of twists to take them apart. So giant screw. Here, <laughs> I'm handing it to you. I thought he was showing you to the camera. No, <laughs> I'm handing it to Randy. But I would say that this is going to fit over that. Yep. Whereas this would not. is not. So this goes on after this goes up. So I'm twisting to get it up in there until that is seated back where it belongs. Then take your spring retaining clip and put it back in place and retighten that 13 millimeter bolt. It bit me. This is real life mechanics. You are going to get your fingers pinched. Uh, you are going to have some difficulties. If I did this all the time, it probably I would know the little tricks of the trade. Um, it was pretty easy on the second JK that I did, but this is actually the first time I've ever done it on a TJ. So, done a lot of lifts and done a lot of springs. And uh, if you didn't know, I do twist wrenches uh, as a full-time job. Uh, I work on everything from small equipment, like weed eaters, all the way up to to fixing and repairing fairway mowers or whatever it is that needs to be done on a golf course. 16 millimeter. So now we have the shock is mounted, the spring is on. The last thing we have to do is go ahead and reattach the sway bar link. But I'm not gonna do that until I get the other side done. Now rinse and repeat on the passenger side. You already saw everything that I did, so I'm just gonna go with the flow and do it. So make sure that this is angled that way, not that way. So the bracket goes out and meets the mount on the axle. There we go. Probably not good to hit that number three on here. That's, there you go. That was a, uh, a T55 Torx to get that sway bar off. After I put the spacers on, uh, we put the tires back on. Everything's already tightened down except for this top piece right here. Which I'm glad I noticed. <laughs> always check. I always like to go through the bolts and check them. It's a good habit to get in. Otherwise, had I not done that, I might not even saw that this was loose and then my sway bar would have came off. But my spring would have came off because the driver's side has an attachment. Suspension is done. We beat the rain. And uh, it is now 212. So overall, didn't take too long. Does take twice as long to uh, do anything 
<laughs> when you're filming because you're moving the camera around. But I am happy to say that this now has new springs, new shocks, new spacers, and it is ready to go. Next up for us is going to be a whole different project as we begin to make a overlander ride out of this. We even already got a canoe, but that's not all because there's another project coming up after the overlander. We've got something else to work on. We got a 350 on full size axles with power assist steering. But that's a whole nother video. <laughs> I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And this has been a how to video with Florida Jeep Rides. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Yes. Uh, there just might be some bloopers at hand. <laughs> I don't I, I don't know. But uh, we beat the rain. And sorry for this impressive do rag that I got going <laughs> made from the sleeve of an old t shirt. It's hot in the backyard. It's in hot Florida. in the backyard. <laughs> I know I might look ridiculous, but hey, maybe this is how you do your upgrades. Maybe you have a professional shop. Maybe you just pay somebody else to do it. But if you're like us, you kind of enjoy the accomplishment of knowing you've done it yourself. Yeah. Till next time, we'll see you later. Just want to drop it. <laughs> Woo -hoo. What's the point of doing a job if you can't have a little fun? I want time to my shoes and jump up and down. This concrete's hard on your rear end. That's cool, like an 18 inch. Could you give me a Milwaukee uh, ratchet? The ratchet. The other ratchet, the ratcheting. Not this, not, not this, not the big one, but the one that's shaped like a flashlight and a 18 millimeter socket to go on the end of it. Shallow well is fine, but it's gotta be three eighths dry. We have an 18 here. I can't see it, I'm trying to get you in there. Just wait, it's not over here. I sees on the hub. Red Loctite on the studs. Put the wheel spacer on. Get your studs or your lug nuts. Concave side in. That makes sure, makes sure that it sits exactly right. With a setting of number one, because I do not want to torque them yet. Hub centric means that the means that this spacer rides on the hub. That's extremely important because the weight is then on the hub. If your spacer is not hub centric, then the weight is on the lug nuts. If it is not well made, that spacer can crack. And this spacer is what's holding the wheel onto the axle. So spacers are not something that you should spend lightly on. Stay away from cheap, junk spacers i only use spider tracks we're going to tighten these down to how many foot pounds 90. 90 foot pounds there is red loctite on them i put a little anti-seize on the hub itself because if i have to change the brakes you're going to have to get this back off to make sure that we are at 90 pounds <clears throat> 90 pounds. Nine
90 pounds. So those are now at 90 pounds. You may not have a, a torque wrench, but it's important to have. At this point, I just want to tell you, not everybody uh, is mechanically inclined or has the tools or the ability to do this. Locally here, Jeepers Den, uh, one of the things that they really do a great job at is putting in lifts and springs and suspensions. So if you don't want to handle the jive yourself, go up and see Jeepers Den on Highway 50 and tell them Florida Jeep Ride sent you.